I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network with me, your host, Harry Simiu, and I'm delighted to say that I am joined by a very, very special guest on this edition to talk to us a little bit about Arsenal's new signing, a player that not many of us know an awful lot about, but this lady does, thankfully. Welcome to the show, Lizzie Becherano, 90 Min's US editor. How are you, first of all? I'm delighted to be here. So thanks for having me. Excited to talk about all things Matt Turner. (laughs) No, the pleasure is all ours, Lizzie. Thank you so, so much. And you said you're excited to talk about Matt Turner. Tell us a little bit uh, about your thoughts on him in general, because I've got to say, as an Arsenal fan, this was a signing that came completely out of the blue. There wasn't links for a long time. It wasn't something that we thought was kind of going on in the background. It was just bang. There it is. Matt Turner is joining Arsenal Football Club. Uh, So tell us a little bit about, as I say, your overall thoughts on him and whether you think he'll be a good fit for the Premier League. So he's an interesting character. He was very underrated his first couple of years in the league. So the way most college graduates get into major league soccer is through a super draft. And he went undrafted, ended up doing a preseason trial with the New England Revolution and signed a contract. So of the ways of coming in, a little bit unconventional in that way. But he really started taking off in 2018. Came about, started doing everything and anything with the team and suddenly became a standout. He's, I personally believe he's a good fit for Major League Soccer. He knows how to stop shots. He's a very proactive player rather than reactive. His footwork is great when it comes to positioning himself to avoid a dangerous situation. However, the question, is he a good fit for the Premier League? I have to go with no, personally. Um, I don't think it's a good move for any of the parties involved, except, I don't know, maybe Arsenal's press officer or the accounts that they have in the US, but he's not great with his feet in terms of play, kind of like a whole Zach Steffen situation at Man City. Okay. So that may be a problem. Um, Greg Berhalter, the U.S. men's national team head coach, has actually said he prefers Zach Steffen because of his footwork. So if that's an indication of how bad Matt Turner can be, then he may have a little bit of problems with Arsenal. However, given the New England Revolution style of play, he's not used as much. So stop shots, manages clean sheets, great with like reflexes and anything on his feet but you you can't count on him to like play in any sort of situation and it happens with the men's national team as well see that's a worry for us because <laughs> what we've seen what we've seen uh, from Mikel Arteta since he's taken over is this desire for the back line and the goalkeeper in particular to be part of that back line when it comes to playing the ball out and that's why with Aaron Ramsdale coming in over Bern Leno, who's a great shot stopper. Let's not take anything away from him. We've looked a better side because of that ability to break the lines as a goalkeeper and, and almost be an extra outfield player. So that concerns me that Matt Turner hasn't really shown that in his game. You say that New England Revolution play in a style that doesn't really expose that. Now, I don't know much about New England Revolution, but are they more direct, would you say, then? Do they sort of cut out that particular role of the goalkeeper, which is playing the ball out into his defence and into the midfield? Yeah, 100%. When they start the ball from the back, short passes, and then work through the defence up to the attack. They don't really rely on Matt Turner for anything other than shot stopping and clearances. The defensive line can be a little bit inconsistent I would say so that's when Matt Turner really steps in with his reflexes and clearing shots and anything to that extent but you definitely can't count on him to play I personally don't understand the move given you have two great goalkeepers ahead of Matt Turner I don't think he'll play like I and a a bit controversial I guess but I think he's a marketing move for Arsenal and that's about it You know what? That's the first thing that comes to people's heads when we talk about 
players coming from MLS. Now, it's not to be disrespectful to MLS. I don't watch enough of it to have an opinion on on the level, on the standard of certain individual players. And that's why I've, I've asked you to come on, because you have that knowledge and you have that insight. But that's one of the first thoughts that normally crosses my mind when we go out and bring in a player, not just from MLS, but a player that isn't particularly a standout in MLS. Like Matt Turner wasn't on my radar in the way that some of the MLS stars are. So I found this strange, but he is in the men's national team sort of set up. Does that not give us some indication that he is a good goalkeeper or is it because there isn't an awful lot of competition? Talk to us a little bit about his involvement with the national team, because we saw some clips recently of him making a really standard save going around social media and, and the commentary on it was, was incredible. It was as if he just made the save of the season and and we couldn't get our heads around that. So <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> so I will say beware of U S men's national team press there. And I'm always critical of this myself. There's a huge bubble around the men's national team where everything and anything anyone does is great. Um, like Anthony Robinson came back from the standard cold. And you saw in yesterday's um, commentary saying he braved coming back to be in the starting lineup and he sneezed and he came back. So <laughs> there's very much a lot of that going on with Matt Turner. He is part of Greg Berhalter's idea coming into the world cup, but there's still a goalkeeping crisis, which should say a lot about him. There's Zach Steffen, there's Ethan Horvath, who's in Nottingham Forest, and then there's Matt Turner. And then more recently into the picture, there's Sean Johnson from MLS as well. So while Matt Turner does play, it should be concerning that he is not the figure at the back. And there's much talk coming in that's saying Matt Turner receives opportunities when Zach Steffen is not in the picture. I have my own reservations about Zach Steffen as well. I don't think he's great either, but... If he's not fantastic and he's still taking a spot, should be saying something. I think Greg Berhalter has no clue what to do at the back. Matt Turner does do some excellent stopping. Like he's great with his hands and using every aspect of his body to like keep the shot out, I will say. But is he the comprehensive goalkeeper you have at the back and you are confident in? No you would have to rely heavily on your back line. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. <laughs> it was it was a signing, Lizzie, that when I heard about it, I, I couldn't get excited about it because I, I don't know enough about him. I, I don't know enough to say, yes, this is a great move for Arsenal. And likewise, I didn't know enough to say this was definitely a bad move for Arsenal. But the, the bit that I keep coming back to is, is the whole marketing piece. And that's the bit that I keep coming back to. And, and there's another player that Arsenal uh, have signed who we believe is going to go out on loan uh, before he actually joins up with Arsenal. And that's Austin Trusty, um, who we signed from the Colorado Rapids, who are also part of KSE's empire. Would you say, and I know I haven't pre-warned you that we're going to talk about this guy, <laughs> but would you say that that's probably a bit of a marketing move as well? Not necessarily. I think that's more of a developmental move. If anything, they see potential. They want to get him playing before he steps foot on the team. The only thing that gets me Matt Turner and marketing related is the way Arsenal play. And he does not fit into that. If he had gone over to Europe to another team who does not rely heavily on a goalkeeper's footwork, then I would say that it's not so much marketing, but as a backup or they see potential. But given Arsenal's future, it makes no sense to bring on a Matt Turner who can't do what they want him to do. So in that case, and given that Arsenal comes to the United States almost every summer, including this one, they're doing different friendlies across the country. It is interesting for me to see that they're marketing him as number one goalkeeper when everybody everywhere knows that's not the case. So for me, yeah, I think it's more about building a bridge than it would be to give him experience. And especially you guys have Ramsdale, you have Leno, and given if Leno leaves, mm. then yeah, maybe he'll be given the cups just like Zach Steffen does at Man City. But 
he he won't be what they want him to be. I think as well, though, from an Arsenal point of view, you, you, you're kind of in this awkward space, right, where you've got Aaron Ramsdale, who clearly has been brought in to be the number one at Arsenal. Um, they spent a lot of money on him. It was £25 million. And at the time, I remember the reaction here. It was very much like, this guy's been relegated in two consecutive seasons. Why have we just gone and spent £25 million on him? And he came into the side and he impacted it right away. He, he really added something. And I think, although he had a couple of moments towards the back end of the season where he was a little bit questionable, overall, he, he was incredible. So I am like, I am reluctant to kind of like jump on a player before he's put an Arsenal shirt on and say, you're not the guy and you're not the right fit. But the more I listen to you and the more I speak to people that cover MLS really, really closely, the more I can't understand the logic behind this signing. Is there an element, though, that you need to go out and buy a goalkeeper who's quite happy to play second fiddle if Aaron Ramsdale is your number one? And does that limit, then, the type of goalkeeper that you can look at? I think he's happy to leave. I do. Even if it's to be a number two, I think for him it's getting that experience training and new type of exposure and yeah, maybe if he does play the Cups, it'll be a new style of play. And maybe, and as he said himself, he has a lot of things to improve on. So maybe he will. However, to what extent do you have someone playing second place and are content? I personally wouldn't be, so I can't understand that. Especially, and if we add the World Cup year, how is Greg Berhalter, and these are U.S. men's national team concerns as well, how is Greg Berhalter going to choose the starting goalkeeper if you have Zach Steffen, who doesn't play, Matt Turner, who will not be playing, Ethan Horvath, who, again, is still number two, Sean Johnson will be the only figure playing week in and week out. So I, being Matt Turner, would have stayed with the Revolution through the World Cup, and then maybe in January gone on and headed in of different types of experience, adventures, training styles, whatever. But the crucial months, you don't necessarily leave to not play, especially his history with injuries as well. He just, he suffered um, tendonitis in February and then a, like right ankle injury in March. So he had a bit of an inconsistent start to the year and he's going to finish on the bench. Is that something we should be concerned about, his injury record? Is he somebody that often picks up knocks often is unavailable because we always say that the best ability is availability because as a football club, we've been plagued by players who just can't stay fit and it's had a really negative impact on us. So go on, make me feel worse about the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, the February injury, I will say, was more at fault from the U.S. men's national team. And he even said it himself. They were playing in freezing cold temperatures and he was trying to stay warm by running back and forth. And he said between the frozen tissue, between everything like that. So that was really just bad planning from the men's national team. Um, March was a little iffy. He did come back quickly, like two or three weeks before expected. So that's great. But you do have a point saying availability will be important given his numbers like to roll with the team. What do you make of players sort of adapting to the two calendars? Because obviously MLS, he's going to play his last game, we think, for New England Revolution on the 19th of this month. He's then going to join up with Arsenal five days later to begin preseason. Then we have the World Cup slap bang in the middle of the European football season this time around. So he's not going to get another break until the end of May next year, potentially. Um, is that just something that MLS players just have to deal with for one season? They have to accept it. They have to reset in order to be able to make those moves to Europe because the calendars are so different. It's definitely a problem. I would say with most players adjusting and that adjustment period could be a little difficult. For him, not so much. I don't think he's going to be playing every single week, maybe two games a week. I think he'll get used to the bench rather quickly, and so that'll make the transition far easier than it would be for a striker or a midfielder. Interesting. Interesting <laughs> stuff. Um, you know what? And 
it's hard because, as I said to you before, we don't want to be in that place where, as Arsenal fans, we're kind of like shooting somebody down or, or dismissing the quality of a signing before he's had an opportunity to impress. But, you know, it, what you've said today, Lizzie, has just reinforced my kind of feeling of not an awful lot of excitement around this deal. And the the prospect of losing Bern Leno this summer, which is a real possibility, he's been linked with a number of clubs in Europe, to replace him with Matt Turner, it worries me because it only takes one injury to your number one goalkeeper and all of a sudden Matt Turner is your number one. And I don't think he's at that level where we can rely on him in the Premier League. So to kind of sum up, to finish off, to wrap up, tell us how you think Matt Turner is going to do in the Premier League and with Arsenal specifically. Listen, he has surprised in the past and he does live up to certain moments or like the grand situation. So he may come as a surprise. I personally don't think he'll do well until he works on his negative attributes, I guess, like until he knows how to play in Arsenal style, unless he gets better with his feet and understands what kind of mistakes to avoid with the Premier League, then he won't be ready. However, if he has a couple months to adjust Maybe he'll live up to it. He is really good at, like with his reflexes. He's quick. He's proactive. He may be good. He won't be great, but he may be a lifesaver in a difficult situation. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, Lizzie, thank you so, so much. Really appreciate you taking time out of your day because I know you're super busy. Uh, let people know how they can follow you on social media and keep up to date with all your great work. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm on Twitter, Lizzie Veterano with an underscore, I believe, um, between the two. So, yeah, always active. Brilliant. We'll leave a link in the description as well. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you're listening via the audio platforms, please do leave us a review. We'll be back very, very soon with more Arsenal-related content. Until next time, take care. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simmons.